Hello and welcome back to The Snake Bite. It is our weekly sports show that airs every Wednesday at noon this semester. I'm John Christovich with James Simpson saying thank you so much for tuning in to FSC TV. James, we are sure excited to get going with another semester of Mox Athletics. Here we go. It's the first snake bite of the year. Like you said, sure is exciting to be back another season, Mox Athletics, and we've already witnessed some great action so far this fall season. As a reminder, in the fall, we've got indoor volleyball, both men's and women's soccer, and both men's and women's cross country, plus a little bit of golf, tennis, swim, and of course, esports. Let's go ahead, we'll take a look at the weekly roundup and the scores from all the moccasin games this past week. There you go, this week's scoreboard, and it isn't a particularly pretty one for Florida Southern, which saw its volleyball teams go 0-2 this week, while both soccer teams lost their matches on Saturday night. The men's and women's cross-country team, though, both took second place at the East Florida State College Fall Classic this past weekend to start their season off pretty strong. We saw the men's soccer team finish their game last night before our production time, and as always, you can see updated results on fscmox.com. And we mentioned earlier that these teams have been in action for a few weeks, so let's take a look at what each squad has been up to. We'll start with the volleyball team, which carries a record of 5-4 and four in what really has been an up-and-down season so far. They started off red hot, going 3-0 and at the FSC Volleyball Classic back in late August, taking down Lander, Augusta, and Bloomfield on the newly installed Streamline Sail Court inside the George Jenkins Fieldhouse. And that new court is a thing of beauty, James, but the Mox cannot play there every game, and so they did wind up cooling down when they traveled to Fairbanks, Alaska to compete in the Denali State Bank Ice Block Classic, going 2-2 two two at that Invitational. They load off the weekend with a huge win against Alaska Anchorage. They took down the number 20 ranked team in the nation in five sets before dropping their next two matches. After returning to Florida, they opened their conference schedule with a pair of three set losses this past week. The Mox are going to have to try to shed their skin and start fresh with two more conference matchups this week on the road. Now both the men's and women's soccer teams are trying to start this week anew as well following the losses to Nova Southeastern on Saturday night. The women's team carries a record of 2-1-2 two and one and two with wins against Spring Hill College and the University of West Florida. This is a team that was picked to finish dead last in the conference by the Sunshine State Conference coaches and they really seem to have taken that personally as they just got on with their season. Just one loss so far this year and one very high quality win over West Florida. They've got new talent, veteran transfers, and a lot of optimism headed into this week's game against Ed Waters and Lynn University. And how about that? Nine goals in five games for that team, just four allowed, and three of those were in the loss this past weekend to Nova Southeastern. So, three-game road trip for that team, which means the men's team will be at home for the next couple of games. And we mentioned earlier that the men's team played at Flagler last night in a game that finished past our production time. But we do know that they are at home this Saturday night as they take on Lynn. The Mox men's soccer team has two wins so far this season by the strength of transfer student Henry Topovin. He's got both game winners this year for the Mox, and that includes six goals in just five games so far. Yeah, you know, he's a graduate student. He's making waves across the state and across the country. He was named the SSC Offensive Player of the Week before being named the United Soccer Coaches National Player of the Week. Just unreal. And they'll be back again at it this Saturday. Now let's look at cross country with just finished competing in their first meet of the year this weekend. The men's team finished second out of eight teams with junior Owen Allen finishing second overall to lead the squad. The young program did very well in their debut meet after losing three all-region runners from last year's squad. Yeah, and, the, and the women's team did great as well as they both competed there at that classic, finishing second as well by the strength of five top ten finishers. And James, you had the chance to talk with Gigi Johnson about her team's performance earlier today. I'm here with Gigi Johnson, runner on the cross country team here at Florida Southern College. They came in ranked seventh in the region, third in the conference. Gigi, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's been a good day. I'm glad to hear that. You know, the team season opener was this past weekend at the Eastern Florida Fall Classic. It was a smaller meet, but the team posted five women in the top ten. What were some of your takeaways from that, that race? It was a really good race for us. It was mostly a workout, but we did race against one of our big competitors, St. Leo. And while, while they did beat us, we were still really close when we only did a workout. So it's a good sign that when it comes time to really compete with them, we could actually beat them in a race. Yeah, I think that's something that is always interesting to see how, how the teams approach different races and kind of how it goes. 
You know, another exciting result from that meet was Rachel Hockenberry is their top seven placement on the team. What sort of impact have those freshmen made so far? It's been huge. Um, it's really, really good to have a freshman like that get up there. We're really looking for a tight pack this season so we can go to nationals. So some of these freshmen have made a huge impact on the team. Yeah, and you mentioned, you know, the goal of going to nationals, the pack running. What have been some talking points from Coach Stephanie Bylander early on in the season when she's talking to you guys? A big one is that packing. Um, the closer your pack is, the better your chances are at going to nationals. So in all of our workouts and everything, we've been really pushing the packing and staying together so we can push each other in a race. Has there been anything that's kind of surprised you about how the season's gone so far or anything like that? I mean, the workouts have definitely been different with that um, packing emphasis. It's been a bit of a surprise. Uh, Rachel, obviously coming out of you know, the, that bottom group up into the top, that was a big surprise for me. I know some of the other girls kind of expected it, but I don't see her quite as much, so it was a big one for me. And uh, how's the energy in the proverbial locker room with Coach Steph mixing it up a little bit? Uh, you know, honestly, some of the girls are like struggling with it a little bit. It is a bit of a like change, but we all enjoy it. Everybody loves running together. You know, we're a big team and it's a lot of fun running together. So we're having a great time so far. That's awesome. And, you know, looking ahead to your next meet at, the, at St. Leo, what are you and your teammates looking to get out of that race to really set yourself up for a solid performance at the Royals Cross Country Classic on one of the fastest courses in the nation? Well, St. Leo's uh, one, known as one of the harder courses. So going straight from that to one of the faster courses is going to be a big advantage for us. It's going to teach the girls how to really push and gain some strength from that. And then going to Queens, we're going to have a great time and run some really fast times. That's awesome. And, you know, as an upperclassman, what are you looking forward to the rest of this year as it is a festival year, it's a long season? How are your feelings about that? I'm really excited. Um, I've been working for this all summer, so I think we can really go to nationals this year. So that's my goal, and I'm really looking forward to putting in that effort and getting there. Awesome, Gigi. Thank you so much for sitting down with us. And that's been Gigi Johnson junior on the women's cross country team here at Florida Southern College. And that team is set to be back in action in 10 days at the St. Leo Invite. In other news, the men's golf team competed in their first match of the year at the Griffin Invitational in Brooksville, Florida. They wrapped up competition after our production time yesterday afternoon, but were in seventh place by the midpoint of the second round. Clay Tucker looks poised to have yet another strong year as he led his team hovering around the 15th spot individually for most of the match. You can check out fscmocks.com for the final results. And the women's team will be back at it next week in their first meet of the year as they'll travel to McCormick, South Carolina for the Savannah Lakes Invitational, while the men are going to hold off till October for their next organized bout. That'll bring us to our Week in Mox History segment, and today we are looking at September 17th, 1998, when the Mox women's soccer team earned their first win in program history with a 4-1 victory over Embry-Riddle. They've got the Eagles next Wednesday, and we will see you then, too. John Kristovich and James Simpson saying thank you so much for tuning in to FSC TV, and we will see you next Wednesday at noon.